I uh, uh, would like to uh, welcome our, our budget chair, Ms. Skinner. Uh, Ms. Skinner, did you uh, have any, uh, any, any comments? Um, no, I just was uh, listening attentively because the, um, some of the information I wasn't familiar with, so it's a good discussion. Thank you. Any uh, further comments or questions? Oh, yes, Mr. Chavez. I'll just make a quick comment. The, uh, you know, we have to bring innovation to our educational institutions. It, I was reading over the weekend a report on public radio out of Los Angeles. And the report title is L.A. Hasn't Had Positive Growth, Job Growth in 23 Years. This is public radio, okay? This is it the Republican right wing. This is public radio in Los Angeles. But when you read the article, it talks about what is the main driver? It's education. If we don't deal with the education uh, for our children and the education for our adults uh, through using uh, new technologies, new innovation, then we're not going to move forward. And so I think the governor recognizes this, and I think we should support the governor on where he's trying to go. I think the LOA, LAO had some good ideas, so uh, that's where I'm leaning. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking back at the, uh, the staff analysis here. Uh, Senator Lou's bill, uh, SP 1143, is identical to the governor's trailer bill language on independent study and blended learning. Um, you know, I, I raised some of the concerns last year um, um, but uh, when we have uh, some of these uh, uh, significant changes, major changes to the way uh, we are conducting um, non-classroom-based instruction um, or, or any other area of education, I, I think there can be strong arguments made uh, on one side or the other in terms of, um, of uh, whether this should uh, be fully vetted through the policy process or, or whether this should be uh, brought through the budget process. I mean, I think there has been some legitimate concerns raised about how the governor has been pushing uh, for uh, education policy, uh, driving it through the, pol the, the budget process. And there are times when that's appropriate, and there are times where uh, we do not feel that it is inappropriate, that there should be a, a more in-depth uh, discussion and vetting of the, the policy proposals uh, underlying the, uh, the, the, the budget uh, trailer bill uh, language being proposed. And so uh, for that reason, I think here uh, this is uh, an appropriate, uh, um, this would be more appropriate, uh, for the, uh, especially given the the bill that is identical to the governor's trail bill language uh, that has been proposed and is moving through the legislative process. Um, the motion's been made to reject without prejudice the governor's trail bill language on independent study and blended uh, learning and to refer this uh, to the policy process. Uh, motion's been seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Marasucci? Aye. Chavez? No. Dababne? Ms. Dande? Ting. Okay, we will hold that open for uh, the committee votes. Um, to, uh, let's see, I know we're jumping around on the agenda here, but I'd like to accommodate our, our budget chair and, uh, and, and address uh, uh, issue number two, uh, with, which is our Proposition 39 Energy Efficiency Programs. Um, so thank you for the Switching of seats, we would like to uh, invite up Cheryl Ide, Department of Finance, Paul Glazuski, Legislative Analyst's Office, Monique Ramos, and Dan Troy from the Community College Chancellor's Office. Start with the uh, Department of Finance. Good morning. Shirley Dad, Department of Finance. Um, Prop 39 revenues for this um, for budget year is 726, 726 million. Half of that will go to K 14 energy efficiency projects, so approximately 363 million. 
Um, the proposal continues from the same construct last year. So it's $316 million for um, K-12 energy efficiency projects and $39 million for California community colleges. Uh, the Workforce Investment Board will receive $3 million and the Conservation Court will receive five. Um, no additional funds have been proposed for the Eco-Revolving Loan Program. Um, the 13-14 funds haven't fully been expended and the program hasn't launched as of yet. So we're going to continue monitor, monitoring um, future funding for consideration. Um, and updates on the current program is that in December, the program guidelines were approved. And then in late January, the CEC began accepting applications. Um, to date, $144 million have gone out in planning funds. And four project expenditure plans totaling $245,000 have been approved. Um, as for the community colleges, uh, they're a little different. $41 million in the projects in 13-14. And um, they don't have to go through the California Energy Commission's process, approval process. So um, the chancellor's office estimates that all of the $41 million will be will have gone out by the end of this month, and three-fourths of the projects will be completed by the end of the year. And those are the highlights, and I'm happy to take any questions. Yes, uh, Ms. Skinner. Finance, I, did I mishear you said half of the 700 and you said it was about $760 million. You said half would go to uh, K-12. I don't think that's... K-14. Actually, it's higher than half. Uh, Ian Johnson, Department of Finance. So the estimated revenues in 14-15 are $726 million. And so half of that funding goes to K-14... Half of those revenues available, 363 million, are available for, oh, for, I, for K-14 yeah. energy efficiency. Right. Of that, of that amount, 316 million is for the K-12 uh, schools. 39 million is for community colleges, and then there's an additional 8 right. million that's split between the Workforce Investment Board and the Conservation Corps. Uh, the the use of the half was confusing in that it the the full amount is in the Clean Energy Jobs Fund. Well, excuse me, let me. Uh, step back. Um, what Prop 39 did by eliminating the uh, tax loophole is put one half, as you're correct, into the Clean Energy Jobs Fund, and then that half is what you just described. But when you said, um, I thought you meant that only half of the Clean Energy Jobs Fund was going to K-12. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The remainder of the benefit to... Um, of the elimination of the tax loophole goes to the general fund. But, yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Uh, Golazewski. Sure. Paul Golazewski with the LAO. Um, we just have one comment to make. So the, the revenues did go down in 2014-15. So in 13-14, there was $464 million available for um, energy programs. And in 14-15, there's $363 million. <clears throat> So the governor in his proposal has made a decision to not fund the loan program or not add any additional monies to the loan program, as you heard. And it is the first year of the loan program, and we're just getting information on how many entities are applying for um, the loan program and such. I think moving forward, though, we would recommend in the future that you do consider, as you get more information about applications to the loan program, which currently total $50 million, which is more than the amount that was available from last year, that you consider prioritizing that program because as a revolving loan program, it can continue in the future to fund energy projects even after the five years are over with Prop 39. But otherwise, we have no concerns with the governor's proposal this year. Thank you. Um, Department of Education. Monique Ramos on behalf of the Department of Education. Um, Proposition 39 guidelines were adopted last December and are posted on both the Department of Education website as well as the Energy Commission's webpage. They include information on how LEAs will submit expenditure plans to the um, Energy Commission and, how, CD and the, how the Department of Education will distribute those funds. As of March of this year, 80% 
or 145 million of the 175 million uh, was available for LEAs, uh, for the current year planning grants, I'm sorry, and has gone out to over 1,500 LEAs. Approximately 480 LEAs have not applied for startup grants, and there is about 34 million remaining um, for planning grants. The Department of Education has been working with uh, the Department of Finance um, in considering allowing these school districts or LEAs to um, have future funding cycles available to them. Um, in addition, of the LEAs that have not applied, 30 percent um, that have not applied for planning grants, 30 um, percent are school districts, 70 percent are charter schools, and 85 percent have less than 1,000 um, students. There is another application process right now. Um, it opened on April 7th and will close on uh, April 30th. Um, reasons that we believe school districts or LEAs have not applied, um, some, some don't need um, planning funds. They know exactly what they want to do with those dollars and are, are prepared to start their projects. Um, some facilities may not qualify. They would be temporary leased facilities. Some charter schools either have closed or will, could be closing in the future. Um, in addition, some school districts that are smaller and charters that are smaller may not have the staffing required to, um, to figure out the Proposition 39 process. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Troy. Yes, good, good morning, Mr. Chair and members. I'm Dan Troy, Vice Chancellor for Fiscal Policy at the California Community College Chancellor's Office. Uh, given uh, the unique uh, organization of our office and that we've uh, worked with our districts on energy sustainability for a number of years prior to the passage of Proposition 39, I think we were uh, in a position to really hit the ground running when these dollars uh, were passed and, and, uh, and, and given to our office, and I think uh, as the data uh, you see on uh, page 10 of your agenda uh, shows, we've made, uh, I think, terrific progress in the first year of Prop 39 this year. Uh, by the end of this year, as uh, noted in the agenda, we expect to have uh, virtually all the dollars uh, expended um, uh, out to districts. Uh, over 300 projects have been approved for funding, and again, we expect that over half of those will be actually completed uh, by the end of this fiscal year. Uh, in the first year, of Prop 39, you can see the districts took on a lot of uh, issues that are uh, all, uh, I don't like the term low-lying fruit because it kind of undermines the importance of the of the projects when you consider that lighting is over 30 percent of a district's uh, energy bill. Uh, converting those lights to uh, LEDs and making them much more energy efficient provides very immediate and real uh, benefits to districts. So not only will that result in uh, uh, increased energy efficiency, which benefits the the whole state, but the schools will have an ongoing cost savings that will help them pour more of their uh, precious resources back into student services. So we're very appreciative of that. Uh, as we move forward uh, into the uh, budget year, we're, we're, we're all hopeful that May Revision will show that the revenues are higher than what we saw in governor's budget. Um, but I think our districts uh, are, are well prepared to uh, expand the types of projects that they're able to fund. We think that they'll be able to move into uh, monitoring by com monitoring base commission projects, which will help uh, uh, increase the energy efficiency of their campuses. It'll be able to track the data uh, that they uh, uh, that they use more sensitively and and adjust their uh, processes over time. That will um, lead to a very very large savings for the for the districts. Uh, we could, uh, if given the resources to do so, we have over two hundred million dollars in projects uh, queued up. Uh, at this time, so I think we're well prepared to continue with uh, with Prop 39. Uh, uh, aside from the projects, uh, workforce was also a key component of Proposition 39. We did peel off six million dollars from our uh, appropriation this year for workforce, uh, and the bulk of that money right now is being used to uh, expand curriculum development for uh, workforce training programs that will be delivered by our colleges. Uh, additionally, some dollars were provided for WIBS to help uh, in their efforts and for the California Conservation Corps uh, who also uh, monitor energy savings. So uh, we've been very pleased with the progress of Prop 39 so far and look forward to working with it uh, in a continued fashion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Troy. Uh, before we go any further and open it up for committee uh, questions, uh, I, I would just like to indicate that uh, the uh, the chair's recommendation on this item, on the issue number two, will be to hold this issue open pending updated revenue estimates at, uh, from the May revise. Uh, but, but so today, uh, this is primarily for informational purposes. Uh, having said that, any questions from the committee? Ms. Skinner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
it, uh, I'm pleased to hear from the community colleges that they're um, proceeding so well in accessing. It doesn't really come as a surprise. Obviously, our community college system has fewer campuses than our K-12, and many of them have uh, facilities managers um, just due to the nature of, you know, they, they have, uh, say, more buildings on one site, and uh, it, it affords itself to have, you know, facility managers and in some cases ones with energy expertise. Our K-12 through schools obviously are in a much different circumstance in that they, um, you know, have many, many, many sites. Some of them are small, so very rarely would they have a facilities manager per site. Um, so there, so getting up to speed in terms of being able to not only access their Prop 39 monies but really plan for it accordingly is, is understandable that it would take longer. Um, but I'm very pleased to hear of the progress with the community colleges. Now, on the question of... Um, of our how to what's our best way to proceed with really making the most of Prop 39? Um, Prop 39 did not require us to dedicate the Clean Energy Clean Jobs Fund towards or Green Jobs Fund, excuse me, Clean Energy Green Jobs Fund towards our educational facilities. It was basically we could have used it for any set of categories of public buildings, but the legislature chose to use it for our K through 12 and our community college facilities, which is great because we know that those facilities, because of our budget cuts and such, are, you know, have really did need help for upgrades and energy upgrades, assist in much more than just reducing bills. It assists in making the environment of the, uh, lear the learning environment much healthier. Um, uh, it's just a lot of, lot of very wise reasons to have directed it towards our K-12 through and community colleges. And yet we also knew that, at least in the K-12, that some of them would, it would take them some time to be fully uh, prepared. So it doesn't surprise us also that when we heard the report from Department of Finance, all of the planning money, so I'll step back, the budget trailer language that we adopted last year set aside a certain amount as planning money, which the schools could access, a certain amount as the direct grants that they could use for their upgrades, and then only $28 million in the ECA revolving loan fund. Now, ECA existed prior to this. Prop 39 monies is not the only ECA money. ECA was always available to our schools, and our schools, many of them, and community colleges have been accessing ECA for years. And ECA was oversubscribed even then, which is one of the reasons why I and others advocated very strongly that we use some of the Prop 39 monies into ECA. So anyway, so we had these three components to our th Prop 39 allocation. And what we've seen is that the schools, the K-12, have fully accessed the planning monies, but only They've only accessed, and you'll correct me, how, what is it, 4.5 million? What was the amount they've accessed now for direct projects? Uh, 245. 245 million, right. About 1,000, 245,000. Oh, excuse me, right. So in other words, it's a very small amount of money that has been now been asked for for direct projects. However, in proposals to ECA, it is currently at 50 million, and this is just for the Prop 39 portion of ECA. Not, there's other additional funds in ECA, but just the Prop 39 portion has already 50 million in uh, requests. Now you might wonder why. Why when they haven't even accessed their direct grant money? And let me venture to um, give some explanation. It is very wise for our K through 12 districts to be getting the planning monies. And when, if you're, if they're getting the planning, if they're getting good advice in terms of that planning money, they're making a plan for how to do an upgrade of their entire set of facilities over a five or ten year period. And they're factoring, what is the amount of money I'm going to get as my direct grant from uh, Prop 39? And then what's the shortfall? And this is where ECA comes in. ECA can help them with that shortfall. Now, as we've already seen, our estimates of revenue from Prop 39 have dropped. Not dropped, but the... the the ballot proposal indicated that there would be about a half a billion a year. We knew that that would vary, and we're seeing this year it's less than half a billion. 
So it may be more next year or it may be less. But the thing that ECA does, it allows us to stretch that money. While we can't guarantee what the revenue is going to be in any given year, we can help assure that the districts that do this kind of planning actually can meet their goals by, by revolving the money and keeping it alive for longer. And this is what ECA will do for us. And this is why you see the uh, more grant requests under ECA. So while the governor has not put in, a, um, in the budget so far an additional allocation, I think it would be very wise for us to do so, especially given that revenues are lower. Now that may seem counterintuitive, but by virtue of the revenues lower, we can guarantee that the money goes further by adding a bit to ECA. So I would hope that we would add, you know, up to 30 million even to ECA in in our budget, given that we know there's only 28 million in it right now. There's already 50 million in requests, and we would expect to see those requests grow as each K through 12 district does its planning. Thank you. Any uh, response from any of the panelists on that? Uh, any of the, the points raised by Ms. Skinner? Seeing none. Any other questions on uh, Prop 39? Seeing none. Okay. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Ms. Skinner. I, I, I want to thank you for, uh, um, I, I, I know that this is a, a personal uh, uh, priority for you, the, the, the Proposition 39 um, uh, issue, and, and, and so uh, uh, thank you for uh, raising um, uh, those concerns, especially revolving the, uh, the ECA revolving loan program. Um, we will uh, uh, take this information and uh, and uh, revisit it, uh, and uh, so we will be holding open this uh, issue item pending the updated revenue estimates uh, in May. All right. That uh, is a good point. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to uh, address uh, issue number two, Proposition 39? Please come forward. Anna Ferreira with the School Energy Coalition. Um, the, my organization was formed uh, well before Prop 39 because of the interest that schools have in lowering their bottom lines after consecutive years of budget cuts. They really do see the correlation between energy efficiency and those dollars being able to be expended for other school priorities. Um, we uh, submitted a letter um, on the budget asking for um, any one-time funding uh, in the May revision to be applied to have the Prop 39 funding raised to the 13-14 levels, and uh, we are supportive of ECA as well. I would only say also, as far as the planning dollars are concerned, because this issue had been um, you know, we'd been aware of this issue prior to Prop 39. We really did see a lot of schools take leadership and move forward with many, many projects. Um, in fact, we're trying to figure out now how we, how those schools participate in the program because they've done a lot of, of the lighting and other uh, retrofits. So we're looking to work with CEC. Also, CEC is asking that the uh, plans be submitted in uh, complete with all the data included. So I think schools right now are busy doing their data uh, collections, their benchmarking, all of those things. They're very excited about this funding, but uh, that's why you're not seeing as many plans moving forward at this time. But I know you will in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comments from the, uh, the public? Um, so I just will, uh, would like to follow up on that uh, with the Department of Education. Um, uh, does the uh, department, um, what barriers do you, uh, does the department recognize in terms of uh, LEAs uh, uh, facing in terms of implementing uh, Proposition 39 projects? The, the department is, um, has issued all of the planning funding. I'm Kathleen Moore. I'm director of school facilities planning and transportation services for the Department of Education. 
And we see that the planning funding has been, um, the vast majority of districts have asked for the planning funding, and as the speaker indicated, um, we believe that districts are out there now um, doing their planning funding, and that there has, um, they're also looking at their opportunities for leveraging funds. I think that um, districts are taking the time to look at these projects more holistically than just simply the dollars that have been provided um, so far. And that also, we, we believe, takes time time. We also have seen that the utility companies um, as well have come forward and are assisting districts and so we see that possibly the reason that some of the um, some of the planning funds have not gone out is that um, districts either one have um, gone forward with their planning uh, and do, don't need the funds or they are um, partnering with their utility companies and um, doing their planning on site as well as the CCC has provided those planning services. So we see a lot of planning activity um, occurring and the funding has gone out for that. We stand ready with the Energy Commission to um, put forth the actual dollars as the projects come in. I think the first four will be funded um, most likely by the end of the month. Um, so we're, we're moving forward with that. I think where some of the um, uh, capacity challenges are, are in the small school districts and in the charter schools that are, you know, one charter charter school. Um, it's a little more difficult uh, for them and we think that um, the CEC has done a good job of, with their, uh, and actually a great job with their technical assistance. They've been out in the field um, providing that technical assistance to, pro to, pr to prepare districts to move forward with their projects. So. Um, we see it as um, being positive uh, so far. Um, I'm sure there are there are pieces that we will um, unearth that need to be you know glitches that need to be corrected. Um, but we we are we're very we're very pleased with the results. All right. I mean, I uh, I, I just know from my uh, experience, uh, you know, uh, with the Torrance Unified School District when I was a a, a school board member. We did uh, what I, I believe you were uh, referring to. We worked with uh, uh, our local electric utility, Southern California Edison, and uh, and and we addressed the, uh, the the lighting savings, which uh, is more than half of the savings achieved at the community colleges. I mean, that was really low-hanging fruit. I mean, uh, in a in a district with a general fund uh, fund budget uh, that has ranged from 160 to 200 million dollars. Uh, uh, depending on where we were during the recession, um, uh, we we achieved immediate savings of over a million dollars uh, by by cutting down on our lighting and energy costs. And and those were a million dollars that we can use, uh, you know, uh, for classroom instruction and, and and for programs. And so, um, yeah, anything that uh, uh, the Department of Education can do to to encourage. Uh, uh, the ramping up of, of these uh, LEA projects, I think, would be uh, immediately beneficial for our kids. Um, any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's go back on to, uh, uh, let's see, why don't we add on to the vote for issue number three. Um, <coughs> Mr. Nasande, Ting. Aye. Okay, so that motion is passed, um, and we will keep it open uh, uh, for Mr. Nasande to add on. Uh, we will go back on uh, the order of the agenda to uh, back to issue number one, um, and uh, this is for the governor's budget proposal. For K through 14 mandates, I'd like to welcome again Department of Finance, LAO, Department of Education, and the Chancellor's Office of our Community Colleges, starting with finance. <coughs> 